Hello, and welcome to Sketchbook Revival. I'm Karen Aubin, the host and organizer of the workshop, and I am so happy that you're here with me on this creative adventure together. So the intention of the workshop is really for each of us to experience the magic of, of what happens when we take the time to create and play and explore and try new things and open ourselves up to new ideas and really just fill ourselves up with inspiration for our creative practices. And to help us do that in the session today, we have a really talented artist named Olga Sorokina. Hi, Olga. Hi, Karen. Hi, everybody. Hi. <laughs> Olga is joining us from New Zealand, although she's originally from Russia, but so she's all across on the other side of the world, but it's so wonderful to have you here with us, Olga. And before we dive in though, I just wanted to quickly introduce you and read a piece of your bio so everybody knows who you are. Olga is an interior designer, a visual artist, the author of a book on sketching with markers called The Sketch, as well as online sketching courses for interior designers. She graduated from St. Petersburg State Academy of Art and Design and has received numerous international prizes for both design and architecture. And so today she's gonna to be sharing with us a little bit of her perspective on creative practice. Her title is called Master an Amazing Two-Point Perspective, Interior Sketching from Scratch. And we're just gonna need our sketchbooks and a pencil and that's it. So that's, we're gonna be doing some drawing, I'm so excited. So Olga, I would love it if you could start us off by sharing a little bit more about, you know, what we're gonna be doing with you today and, you know, how it fits into your approach of creating in a sketchbook. Yeah, sure. So first, thank you so much, Karen, for inviting me to join this amazing conference, Sketchbook Revival. I think it's an amazing, wonderful idea to do so, to help other creatives to revive their, their sketchbook. And today I'll be sharing with you uh, secrets of two-point perspective active as an exact draw an interior of a bedroom and first i will show you my favorite warm-up exercises so you can make your sketches absolutely professional looking wonderful and in total enjoy the process so i really do love perspectives the perspective especially with my background as an interior architect i find that while drawing in perspective if it helped much to put ideas from my head onto the paper and sketching is the most wonderful and quick way to reflect your ideas to communicate with your clients with your customers with people around you so i'm really glad you guys to share this knowledge today with you Oh, it sounds wonderful. I feel like I'm going to learn so much. It's exciting. I like yeah. your secrets. <laughs> oh, so, oh, yeah. Let's go. So first, I'd love to share with you a couple of warm-up exercises. So part one is warm-ups. And I, I love a bunch of squares. So literally, we are drawing, let's say, uh, three squares and now we will be practicing very simple thing we will be drawing just nice straight lines so the first square will fill in with nice vertical lines so the intention here is to place approximately the same um, space the same dimension between each and every line and to try to fit this square as, uh, <laughs> as as good as you can the best possible way the second square will be all about horizontal lines so as quick as possible with the same intention to put space like equal space in between each horizontal line and the last the third one we will fill in with diagonals so the same idea so by doing this quick little warm-up we are actually training our hand we let our creativity flow but that is not the end of this exercise now we want to create exact same squares but 
below. So now we don't have borders. The second part of this warm up is a little bit trickier. So now we imagine this square form here. And again, we try to fill it in with nice vertical lines. And the best thing is to keep this uh, upper and bottom line straight. So you can try it a couple of times and you might notice that the second time round it will look even more confident and more professional. So the same thing with the horizontal lines. And please don't focus too much on the correctness of these lines. Try to draw as quick as possible and try to enjoy the process because here we're basically warming up our hand. And the last one is create, to create this diagonal square. So you can practice it a couple of times and you will see that it doesn't take a lot of time. It takes a couple of minutes, two to five minutes, but the more you practice it, the better you'll become. And your hand now is ready for our uh, drawing because for interior designers and architects it's extremely important to create this nice straight confident lines. So it was part one like a quickish uh, warm-up exercise and now we're switching to the most interesting part. So here we will be drawing an era of a bedroom in two point perspective. The first thing I want you to do is to create a nice picture frame. So basically, these are the border of our future drawing. So what we are doing, we are simply creating a nice rectangular form. And it really helps, uh, uh, gives an interior designers to overcome this common fear of white blank uh, piece of paper in front of them. So this uh, picture frame, you instantly start this creative process. The second thing, we will draw the horizon line. So the horizon line is like the imaginary line. So if you think about um, sky and ocean, and this line where sky meets the ocean is exactly the horizon line, uh, I will put a little icon of the eye here because it's basically the same as our eye level. So this line indicates the level at which we are standing and watching at our interior. The third thing, we will draw the corner of the room. So let's say that our corner is placed uh, slightly to the right. So we will want it our left wall with the bed with the headboard close to the uh, left wall will open more. And if you are familiar with the rule of a uh, golden section of proportions, you will find that I put this line almost uh, at these proportions, like golden section. Um, Greeks, they believed that this is like the best possible proportion in the, uh, in the world. So our bodies uh, and, and plants and everything in the world is aligned with this uh, rule of golden section. So we put our line and I recommend you to avoid placing this line right at the very center, especially in the interior design drawings, because it will basically split your space into halves and it's not very good in terms of uh, composition. The next thing, we will introduce scale to our drawing. So the scale that we will work today is one to 50. What does it mean? So it means that one meter in reality equals two centimeters on paper. For example, uh, one of the most easy, easy and famous uh, scales is one to 100, which means one meter in reality equals one centimeter on paper. But since we are working with a slightly bigger format, I do recommend to use um, scale 1 to 50, especially if we are working on A4 format, which is this piece of paper. All right, so our uh, height of the room will be 3 meters. So to scale, it will be 6 centimeters. 
six centimeters. So we will put two centimeters below the horizon line and one more time, two centimeters. So in total, these are four centimeters below the horizon line. And let's put two centimeters above the horizon line. And this is our help ruler. This is our uh, really uh, helpful guideline. I recommend you to mark this height so we can put zero, the first meter, the second one, and the third one. So the height of the ceiling is three meters. And now it's time to locate our vanishing points. For a lot of you guys, I know that perspective might look a little bit tricky. These vanishing points might also look very complicated. But here I'd love to simplify everything. So when we're dealing with two-point perspective, the most easiest thing to locate these two points on our horizon line is to take the diagonal of your picture frame so you can map with, uh, it with your pencil or simply with your hand. And we want to put this space on our horizon line. Approximately, it doesn't need to be like very, very precise. And here, we le uh, let's name the left vanishing point A1 and the right one A2. Uh, A2. Uh, because perspective, it's, it's a... a way to reflect reality. Of course, there are some really precise architectural methods to place these points, but this is the way, the way that I was teached at the St. Petersburg Art Academy. They take this diagonal and to place this space in between the points. And now we will open the left wall. So to connect A2 with zero and prolong this line to the left. So first, we can do this line in the air. So we want to imagine how to look like. And this uh, will help us to make this line more confident and more straight. And second, we want to connect H and mark three. Again, we can first do it in the air to imagine how to look like. And then quickly and rapidly, we show this line. Yes, you can use a ruler if you want to, but I recommend you to trim your hand because this way sketches will look so much more uh, lively and uh, interesting. The next thing, so now we have this left wall appeared in our drawing, and now we will show the right wall. The same idea, we connect A1 and 0. First, you can draw this line in the air and then you put it on the paper and then we connect a1 and 3 and now we are done with the geometry of a space now you can see that we have a ceiling we have two walls and we have a flooring area and now it's time to show our bed but first I want we to quick sketch a layout for this room. So again, we are drawing a little rectangular form. Uh, we here doesn't really matter if it's to scale or not to scale. Let's quickly show this room. So here we'll have a bed and a doorway. You can quickly sketch as you can. Uh, see it. I know that uh, not everybody here is familiar with interior design, with uh, drawings, um, I mean uh, with layouts, uh, but I want you to get the entire idea of how we position ourselves in this space and the basic, what the basic dimensions are. So basically our station point is somewhere here. So we are standing and watching at this space this is the direction of our eyesight. So we are watching at this um, corner and we have an angle of view. So usually it's about uh, like 60 to 80 um, uh, degrees. So I will hatch, make some hatching for the angle of view. So this is we are, this is our station point and we are looking at this space this way. 
So our bat, let's say that it's located at one meter away from the corner. The bat itself, to make everything easier, will be two meters width. Its width and its length is also two meters. And that's it. Now we are going back to our drawing. The second ruler, so we have the first ruler here where we marked out three meters. The second ruler will be parallel to our horizon line and it runs through the zero mark. It's this nice long line. It will help us a lot to position this uh, object's object in perspective. And here we want to mark the same two centimeters. Like this is our scale, one to 50. So starting from zero, we put two centimeters to the left. We mark it as, as one more time, two centimeters, and the third time round, um, two centimeters. So here we can mark again, meter one, two, and three. And the same idea will apply to the left. So again, we put this uh, meters, but now let's call them, let's name them minus one, minus two, and minus three. So our situation is our bed is standing one meter away from the corner of our room. How do we? So we will connect a one vanishing point with minus one. So we prolong this line. And now we can see this line, this border of the bed, like a, think about it as a projection on the floor of our bed. Then we want to show its uh, width, like two meters. So here it's from minus one to minus three, the width. Again, we are connecting A1 and minus three. So now you can see the width of our uh, bed uh, here in perspective. And the last thing we want to do uh, is to show its length. So here, you can see that it, it stands like very close to the wall. That's why we will take this space from zero to mark two and we will connect A2 and mark two. And here you go. Now we have this nice projection of the bed in your interior. Now everything starts working really easily because all we want to do now is to make a couple of, to draw in a couple of vertical lines. So this will be the height of our bed. To make it more precise, normally the height of the bed equals 40 to 50 centimeters high. So here, if we have two centimeters for one meter to our scale, that will mean that half of a meter, 50 centimeters, will be the middle of this segment. And all we want to do is connect this point with A2. Sometimes I get asked, how do you know which vanishing point to select? That's really very easy. So all you need to do is to think about the walls. So let's check the left wall. We see that its lines are uh, converging into the right vanishing point to A2. This means that all the lines which are parallel to our left wall, let's take a look again at our layout plan. So we see this is the line for the wall and we see that this line is parallel to it, which will mean that this line will also go to A2. And here you go, this is it, it goes, it runs up to A2. Let's take, for example, the right wall. We can clearly see that it's converging to the left and to A1. And uh, all the lines which are parallel to it, so this is our right wall, and this line is parallel to it, and this line is parallel to it. So these two lines, this and this, they will be converging at the same vanishing point, in this case, A1. All right, and now as we showed the height of the bed, so again 50 centimeters, you can see that this line hits this vertical, uh, two verticals in these two points. And these two points, they will help us to uh, complete the box of the bed. Because when working with um, interiors, 
it's very, very important to think boxes, to think really simple objects, uh, to not focus too much on details. So see all the objects around you as simple geometric forms like parallelepipeds, uh, triangles, or maybe squares, something like that. So this is basically the most complicated part to uh, construct this perspective. And now we can decorate it a little bit. For example, we can uh, draw in a beautiful headboard, whichever style you like. Maybe it's a minimalistic style, then it will be like all nice straight lines, maybe high tech. If you're more into classical, you can uh, put beautiful curves here, whatever you want. Uh, on the wall, we can put maybe a painting of, or a series of paintings. Again, please keep in mind our right vanishing point. So all our lines will be converging into it. So let's say that we have a nice painting hanging on the wall. And remember about A2. And now we can put also a doorway. So we have a nice doorway here. Let's say uh, that it doesn't really matter how far away it is from the corner of the room. Let's locate it maybe here. Let's show its width. And in terms of height, normally the height of the doorway is 2 meters, 10 centimeters. So we have this nice ruler, this vertical ruler. We find mark 2 and plus a couple of centimeters, like a couple of millimeters in this case. And now we connect A1 and this mark for the door. And it gives us the top of the doorway. And then you can put some more details um, and this is it. Finally, we are switching to the details of this interior. So at this point, we can erase all the unnecessary lines that can be uh, more distracting, like especially these construction lines uh, inside uh, the um, bed, the box of the bed. And let's simply put a couple of pillows, a couple of pillows, and uh, think about more curved, slightly curved lines when you're drawing pillows, not too strict, because, because if, we think, if we think about textile, it's all nice and soft. We can uh, even draw in a couple of folds. Also, we can draw in a nice uh, blanket, and remember that in general, this line of the blanket, it will also run up to A2. And since blankets, it's a textile, this that when it's hitting the corner of the box of uh, the bed, uh, this line will become more softer. So you will see that this is textile, it's not like a metal, because metal and wood, they tend to be more rough at the corners and textile, uh, skin, leather, they are very mild, very soft. Also, let's say we want to put a nice little carpet here, a nice carpet. So again, if we look at this carpet uh, on our layout plan, I will make some hatching for it, so the carpet. So again, we want to make the border of the carpet so it is a little bit, a couple of centimeters away, away from the wall. And we use our A2 vanishing point. And to complete, to finish this carpet, we'll use our A1 vanishing point to show its border. And we can create some, some texture. So since this is carpet, it's corner can be very, very um, like bushy. Think about um, like nice short lines. Also, we can play with the ceiling. Let's say that we have like a maybe double ceiling. So we can draw a couple of more lines running down to A1 and A2. We can show some height for this double ceiling and also you can place 
some fixtures, some lighting fixtures. I do in crisscrossed uh, this X's um, in in architecture sketches. It it is like a symbol for turned on light. Here you can put on maybe um, some lighting if you want to. What design do you like? Anything you want. Maybe it's a simplistic Danish design. Maybe it's a more classical one. So think about your ideal bedroom interior. Think about style that you like. And at the very end of this drawing, I always recommend to put a signature on top of it, because especially in our age of Instagram and Pinterest, uh, images spread through the internet, and it's always good to know who is the author of the sketch. So we want to put either our name or the name of the project. And that's it, you guys, for this quick little tutorial, like introduction to amazing two-point perspective and interior sketching. How are you doing, Karen? It was really fun, and I'll show you my my page. I kind of yeah, I, can't... I did my best to follow. Oops, to follow along. But that, I love um, just being able to be so technical and get that perspective, which is something that. You know, we don't always have the opportunity to learn the technical skills that allow you to create these wonderful perspectives and very realistic kind of drawings. So thank you so much for these tips and ideas on how to do that. And I can see people applying this to, you know, other types of drawings that might be dealing with interiors or yeah. buildings or things. So thank you so much, Olga. So everybody, yeah. come share exactly. your, um, your perspectives, your interiors in the Facebook groups so that, um, we can all see them. I'm sure Olga would love to see them as well. And ask any questions you have for Olga in the Facebook group as well, of sure. course, and anything like that. Yeah, I'd love to, uh, to answer your questions, yeah. Thank you, that would be great. I love questions, <laughs> so please do ask me. <laughs> yeah. So I would love that Olga, you know, I'd love to ask all the speakers um, before we wrap things up, if they could share, if you could share like your, number one tip to help us keep going with our practices you know like is it the idea of um yeah we want to keep going and creating and being inspired so that we can keep having fun and improving our skills and all that so if you have one tip your favorite tip for people your students maybe um you could share that with us that would be great yeah i think number one tip is to not be afraid to draw because what i can see a lot of people are really struggling with the beginning the step one like the very first step to simply take a pencil take a sketchbook take a piece of paper and uh, maybe draw just something even this like super simple warm-up exercise to draw a line like very first easy step they are all afraid of um, like the white page they think that they should create like a masterpiece at this one goal it's not about that my friends because it's about the process it's about taking your time even like 10 15 minutes and investing it into drawing because by investing into drawing you are investing in yourself you are feeling yourself with energy with this beautiful creative energy and you will see that it give you so much uh, inspiration and energy to create to work on your other projects the ideal case scenario is for example you have a weekend and uh the first thing you do like you wake up you have your breakfast and you take your sketchbook and a pencil and local cafe so you don't think about like what i will create why i'm doing that you just do that and you will find yourself that when you're sitting in another environment uh you will see how much differently you are thinking um and you will see that your creative energy will grow so this is my like biggest number one tip to not be afraid to try to practice it the more the better but even five to ten minutes a day they will work so yeah not be afraid to draw wonderful thank you so much to leave us with that, those words of inspiration which um are lovely to hear and very encouraging for everyone thank you so much olga
So yeah. I know you have um, a wonderful free gift for everybody as well. Could you share with us what that is so people can sign up for it? Yeah, sure. So this free gift, it's uh, my free video course on perspective basics. So in this free video course, I share with you basics of not only two point perspective, uh, the one we did today, but there I go so much more in depth. I uh, show you how two point perspective works both in architecture, drawings, in urban sketches, and in interior design because a lot of my students, I know a lot of people are in into urban sketching, sketching on location, sketching while traveling. So it will definitely help you as well if you travel a lot to make sketches while traveling. And also in this free video, I share with you basics of one point perspective. So basically these two types of perspective, one point or sometimes uh, it is called frontal perspective and two point, which is sometimes called oblique view. Uh, they are the two essential for mastering architecture drawing and interior sketching so they are the most important ones so you can finish this free video course in a, a, literally in a couple of days because lessons they are like hot and sweet and straight to the point yeah so i'd really love you to to enroll in it and enjoy the content <laughs> oh thank you so much what a fabulous course so involved and in depth thank you so much i'm sure People are gonna love that. Click on the link right below the video to grab that and sign up for this fabulous offer. Thank you, Olga, for everything, for this great um, little taste of what you do and, and how to approach it, and also for the free gift. So, so wonderful. So uh, thank you everyone for joining us, and I look forward to seeing you on the next session. Bye for now. Bye, Olga. Thank you, everybody. Bye, bye, Karen.